starting at verse 10. Okay, no, let's start at verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Pat's two cents. And some of you have so, so many sharp words coming out of your mouth. You kill the very spirits of the family members in your household. And the sad part is you enjoy doing it. All right, let me go back to verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Hmm, how you like them apples? Yeah. See, all of that is part of the flesh. When you yield to the flesh, you put your light out. You can spark, but there's no light. Why? Because there's too much flesh over it, suffocating the power. You ever get in a, uh, have you ever seen the movies where they say the oxygen is going out? They're trapped in a cave or a tunnel and the oxygen is, is depleted. They try to light fires and they have to say, no, 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 we can't burn the fire because the fire will take the rest of the oxygen because fire feeds off of oxygen. The fire of God feeds off of your holiness. And if your holiness is depleted, your fire starts to die out. And then your spirit starts to die out because there's not enough Holy Ghost oxygen to feed your lungs. You cannot afford to toy with the things of the flesh, with the works of darkness, with the things of Satan. You cannot live in an atmosphere full of stench, full of sin, full of bitterness, full of anger, full of violence, full of abuse, full of molestation, full of stealing, full of lying, full of cheating, full of manipulation, full of prejudice. You can't live in that atmosphere and think it's okay. Some of you right now, you look at another race and you think automatically they're less than you are. See if you can take that into the pearly gates and get in. Think about it now. Some of you would, 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 would have a hissy fit if one of your children married a person out of their race. I don't care whether you black, white, Indian, red, yellow, purple, polka dot. You have a holy, go I mean, a, 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 an unholy fit. Why? 
because you don't see them the way God sees them. And if you don't see them the way God sees them, you don't love them. If you don't love them, baby cakes, guess what? You fall so short that you actually may not enter in. I don't care how royally, how faithfully you serve God. See, we think if we're not doing dope, if we're not shooting up, if we're not getting drunk, if we're not gambling the night away, if we're not committing adultery, we're cool, baby. We're in like Flynn. No, some of you suffer from the sins of the heart. Your heart is stained. Your heart is foul. You're full of bitterness. You're full of hatred. you got murder in your heart. If you slap your wife or you knock your husband in the head, you laugh when you see them look shocked. You think it's funny that they got hurt. You think it's funny to see them flinch from pain and agonize. You love it because you're sadistic. Where does sadism come? It comes from Satan. It comes from darkness. It comes from murder being in your heart. Malice. And God does not want malice in our hearts. See, we think, uh, you know, we think of the, of the typical sins. Some of you sit right there in your church. Some of you men are lusting after those women so bad you could barely keep it down in public. Some of you women are sitting up there drooling over somebody else's husband. And some of you are bold and bodacious and, and, and <laughs> callous enough to just walk up on them and try to flirt with them. And you think that's okay because you want it. Hey, if you can get it, hey, why not? Stop it. You people... You have been around it so much, you really don't know that there it's it's a sick way of living. You can walk up on somebody's wife and give her the up and down and 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 let her know that that if she's game, so are you. You can't sit up there in church or at work. And whizzy whizzy into somebody's ear about somebody's personal business, their sins, their child being sent to prison, what they did, what for, and all that. That's gossip. That's slander. That's that's malicious. Did, I, come on now. You're messing with somebody's reputation. If you love them, You'll keep it to yourself and you'll take it to God and pray for them. You'll go to them and ask them, is there anything I can do to help? That's love. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We don't know what love is. So we mix love. We mix it up. As the kids say, we get it twisted with lust. We mix love with using somebody. We mix love up with control, narcissistic control. We mix, uh, what can I say? We mix goodness when we're nice to our neighbor and all that. We mix goodness with manipulation. The only reason I'm being good to so-and-so is because I know they got blah, 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 and that's going to serve my purpose when I need them. I'm going to need them in about two months, so I better be nice to them now. Oh, God ain't looking at what you're doing. He's not looking at you with a with a heart full of joy. He's looking at you with, with he's like, get that out of my face. That stinks. Your whole motive stinks. See, it's not just sinful acts. It's sinful thoughts. It's sinful feelings. It's sinful motives. Motives. And many of you don't even recognize that your motive is foul. It's always been foul. Some of you men will toy with a woman's emotions because you know you're ready to start preparing them for their uh, booty whoopings. Because you need something to control. You need something to lord over. That's right. I'd be the big cheese up in here. 
So you want them to fear you because that feeds something in your flesh that's sick. And what do you do? You start out with the push and pull. I love you, baby. Oh, yeah. And then something comes up that's not even worth thinking about. And you make a big deal out of it. Yeah, it really hurt me when you did so and so. You know, you blah, 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 blah. And now you play the victim so that they can come and comfort you. Manipulation. And then you start threatening that maybe the relationship needs to be over. Maybe they don't really want you after all. Well, if you really want me, prove it to me, baby. Control, manipulation. You think God doesn't see that? And some of you are mounting pulpits, preaching other people in the word, knowing doggone well your crap stinks up to high heaven. That's why you have to be careful. I'm not trying to be mean, but God is not, he will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you reap to your flesh, you will, if you sow to your flesh, you will reap corruption. If you sow to your spirit, to the spirit of God, you will reap life everlasting. You got life. If I can do this right. Oh, forget it. You know what I mean. You got life or you got death. Mm, mm, mm. So how do you know when you're living right and when you're not? You read the word of God. Read it multiple times daily. If you don't understand what you've read, circle it, call somebody, a spiritual mentor, a spiritual counselor, a spiritual counterpart, brother or sister in the spirit, a spiritual leader. Call somebody, say, I'm going to read this to you. Can you tell me what this means? After a while, the Holy Spirit will begin to show you, open your eyes, your mind. So you read the word, you pray to God constantly. You get a bad attitude, you get a foul thought in your mind, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You're casting down every imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. So you cast it down, you reject it by rebuking it. And asking God to cleanse your spirit from even having thoughts like that. Seriously. You have to battle with your flesh. You don't just battle against the devil. You battle against you. So that your own flesh doesn't take you down and take you out. You ask God to give you a disdain for the sin flax of the flesh. And you ask God to give you more and more hunger and thirst for his righteousness, for holiness. Fill your heart with his love, not yours. Your love is contaminated. Fill your heart with his agape love. Not phileo. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. Not phileo. Not the romantic love. Hey, baby. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're talking agape. Agape is unconditional love. Here's another thing. When you love God, that in and of itself will motivate you even more so to mortify the deeds of the flesh. I feel like I should stop and I'm going to obey what I'm feeling in my spirit because I know people have short attention spans. Father, I pray that you bless everyone who has heard this word with a hunger and thirst for righteousness. I pray, Lord, that you would put more of a disdain for the works of the flesh.